Today's episode of In the Trenches is brought to you by System 12 Guitar Method. Sign up today at lionroxy.com. In the Trenches with Ryan Roxy. Hello, 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 and welcome to another live stream episode of In the Trenches with Ryan Roxy. Wow, here we are, folks. Let everybody just come on in. Come on in. Get on in the chat. That's where we want you at. Thank you very much for dropping by our podcast. Today's a family day. This is what I liked. As you can see the smile on my face, it's a family day. And uh, I'll talk about our guests in just one second. But you know, I got to take care of some of that business in the beginning. How about our illustrious producer, Vic Chalfont, uh, pimping out the System 12, like he's sounding like he's underwater. So if you want to learn guitar while you're underwater, definitely go check out System 12 with Vic Chalfont. If you want to <laughs> I get the bird, I got the little bird backstage from him. I love it. Well, folks, as you come on into the uh, chat, we love you on, um, and we think you're very special. Wait, what is that? I'm not saying that. I'm not going down that route, but I am going to say this. Go to the YouTube official channel. You hit that subscribe button right there that Vic has. And if you are listening to us on the audio podcast, which is Apple, Stitcher, uh, Spotify, et cetera, uh, pull on over because today you want to be in the chat, whether it's Facebook Live or whether it's YouTube Live, you want to see this man's face. All right. He's, it's the face. It's the face I'm talking about. It's not just the face. It's the man, the myth the mystery today. We are going to unearth the mystery of the world's, um, what would you call him? A, a percussionist, a drummer, a friend of mine for many, many years. And we are going to uh, discover so many things about him because I have a script. That's the reason why. We are going to talk so much crap we are going to talk so much truth, and it's up to you to find out which one is the uh, factor fiction. So, without further ado, would you please welcome the world's most mysterious percussionist, Mr. Paul Blazik? Hello, Paul. Brian, how are you? How are you doing? <laughs> we said we were going to do this for a <laughs> long, long time. When was the last time you got a two and a half minute introduction? Oh, Ever. wow. Probably my birth, probably when I was born. You breached. That was about it. <laughs> yeah, when I was breached. No, wait a second. <laughs> have you ever done a podcast before? I'm just curious. Yes. Yeah. Well, you have. Okay, okay, cool. So, mm -hmm. And you're going to probably one-up me and say, oh, I did Rogan earlier or something today. <laughs> you know? No, but Absolutely. So this is a little bit different as you can tell already right off the bat, because we know each other, there's, it's not, we're going to, you know, forego the niceties and like sort of me doing all this deep research on you because I kind of know a lot about you, but there's certain things I know nothing about. Let's and keep so, it that way. <laughs> why should we? Don't you want oh, the people to know? As I as don't care. Can. I don't care anymore. It's okay. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it. We're going yeah. in. All right. Just so you know, folks, it's this is not a uh, shaven Paul Blazik interviewing unshaven Paul Blazik because when we first look at each <laughs> other uh, on on camera, because usually podcasts are just audio, right? Um, but we do ours on uh, the YouTube of Ryan Roxy official channel, uh, which you should subscribe to. By the way, second pimp in the last uh, five minutes. So the thing is, when we first looked at each other on video, we were like, shit. We're, we were wearing the same clothes. So, so Paul, oh, man. very nice. And, and he was very, very gratuitous. And he went and bought and got a new hat. He went in and changed a couple different hats. But this hat <laughs> is another significance, right? Because that yep. hat yeah. is what sort of bonds us together. And, and you want to you throw out a little hype to Coke Santa, like right out well, of the Well, I will. It's not a new hat because it says Jones Hollywood 2015 New Year's. And okay. uh, it's, I would say Jones is kind of an establishment where people, it's a rock place and it's pretty cool. But when Brian comes in town, we'll usually go there, have a good steak or some food and many of drinks with the one and only Keith McCarthy. And, there he is. And we'll, look yeah. who's already in the chat. Mike Fasano. There's, there's another. Uh, yeah, he's part of the crew. I would say hello. we had Mike on the podcast. What do you call hello, him? Sack? Hello, Sack. <laughs> There's Bianca, the, your road trip partners for life. Actually, oh. 
You Ooh. you saw Bianca, my wife. You saw her in the flesh before I did. Well, actually, not before, but in the states, you did. I had never seen her in the United States, and you guys saw her first. It's a long story. We'll get into it in just a little bit. <laughs> All right. But Jones is sort of, folks, that is sort of the Hollywood hang where uh, Paul and I have uh, jammed together. Um, and perhaps we've, you know, taken one or two of these down yeah. over, the, over the years. A mm. few. Just a few. Ah, iced tea, of course, folks. Iced tea. We've, we've had some good times there. Yes, we have. But to kick off the podcast, uh, we always start with this. We try to always start. You got to go back to go forward. And this is one of those things, Paul. I don't know where you're from. I just figured you were born and raised in that apartment in Los Angeles that you've <laughs> lived in forever and ever, and that we've had so many good times in and out of, and just did recently a couple of weeks ago. But where were you, where do you come from? Is it is it all Nevada? right? Well, were you born in a manger? No, no, but close. I was close. I was born close to where hay fields are because I'm from Iowa. I'm from a small town in northeast Iowa uh, called wow. Lawler, Iowa. But it's funny because every time that we'll play, and a lot of my guys in my band now, they're all from Spain. So when my name comes up, they want to introduce me. They always say I'm in the witness protection program. So I just go with it. <laughs> and that's just that's this interview's over. Okay, I gotta go. You might as well. You that's might as well. It. You know what? You could be in the witness protection agency because <laughs> you have you're a man of many, many disguises over the years, as we will talk about. But <laughs> Iowa. Now what yeah, okay. Does did that where did you discover drums and okay. all that kind of stuff? Was it in Iowa? Was it on a, a, a corn husking machine or what was it? <laughs> it's not corn husking machine. No, that's Nebraska. Anyway, uh, I remember, I remember, I remember first, I was really young, real young. I remember my first snare getting was a slinger and I wish I still had that. It's probably worth a trillion dollars, but my yeah. mom was, my mom went to get it. I was probably like seven or eight. I remember her going to get that snare and it's her running. Snare drum. It wasn't the whole drum kit. It was, just just a, it was just a snare. So when you're starting in drums, my first percussion instrument playing was a, the cow or the uh, uh, wood block in kindergarten. But then when the first thing you needed to do is get a snare, not a drum kit, just a snare. So my mom went to get that. And all I saw her was running back to the car, one of our old Cadillacs, where a German Shepherd was chasing her through this backyard of a farm. And then she, she regretted it ever, me drumming it ever since. But that's the first. Drum it sounds like drum. petty theft. It sounds like your mom actually stole the snare drum. Now that's where I'm thinking. But once again, I'm in the witness protection program. I only get three questions a year to my parents. That's it. So <laughs> I didn't know how that works. I didn't know you that's how that works. Three. Okay. So no, wow. just growing up, just playing in uh, bands and doing but I was doing sports. So then I went. I went to uh, from uh, from high school. I was still playing drums, music, all that stuff. I went and played football at Iowa State university so really what, yeah. what position what was it were you wait let me guess what position you were you were a running back i was recruited as a running back and then moved to strong safety yeah wow and strong safety really okay as folks i know because we have some european listeners and we thank you for being european and we thank uh, you for listening, <laughs> of course, but i try to convert as many people okay to the NFL as possible. <laughs> and right now, folks, this is during, if you're listening to this at a later time, this is during the LA or uh, the uh, NFL playoffs. And um, we had a big weekend. We're going to talk a little bit more about football, but I'm, I didn't know that you went to Iowa state yeah. playing football. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, so ended doing the that. Career. Was it just, was it just basically your scrawny size that ended the career? <laughs> Dude, <or> what was <laughs> I was, I was playing, I was two fifteen, two twenty, but, uh, what ended my career was, uh, I was a nation with a wood block. I mean, you yeah, thinking about the wood block politics. Right? No, I was like, it's a, it's a it's a tough business. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to L.A. anyway. I might as well play drums. <laughs> <laughs> why were you going to L.A. anyway? Was did you? Go I was. There? I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Is because when I was going to Iowa State, I was getting um, a major in uh, advertising. So I got a I got an internship at Paramount Studios. 
So I would always go down to there. I wouldn't even work. I was like, I'm doing an intern, doing nothing. I'd go down to music production and I would go down and hang out with Woody Harrelson over at, at the, the Cheers set. Right. <laughs> But uh, and, and would you'd actually literally hang out with Woody Harrelson? Yeah. I would imagine because, folks, if you've ever been to a bar or any sort of social, uh, any sort of social gathering with Paul Blazik, you will quickly find out that he is fearless. He has no problem going up to anybody <laughs> and striking up a conversation. I've seen you say things to males, females, whoever, that have just been like. I would never say that, <laughs> but that's what gets you like sort of in this circle that you're in, right? I don't like, like the circle. I'm trying to get out of this circle, including you. So, I know. I bring you so back no, in. no. Oh, by the way, folks, just so you know, to clear up a rumor of last week, a lot, I, I, there was a lot of concerned messages that came in saying, I hope you're okay, Ryan. I heard your voice. Well, what happened was we were experimenting with some new uh, sound equipment and apparently it took my voice down two octaves. So I sounded like <laughs> I was in the witness protection agency. It sounded, like, it sounded like one of those voices where you yeah, she came and I stayed uh, by the river and I don't even know what witness protection agency people say. But <laughs> anyway, this is my normal voice. Does my voice sound back to normal a little bit? Uh, Vic Chalfont is saying thumbs up, but uh, let me hear you guys in the comments if my voice sounds okay. What about Paul's voice? It's not about me. It's 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 all about Paul here on in the trenches. Today. Wow. And and the thing Ryan, is, Ryan, thank I'm, you. I'm so friggin' happy to have you on the show because I am finding out a lot of stuff that I did not know. The I didn't that know you were Mr. Hollywood coming into Paramount Studios, right? The fact that we've known each other for 30 years. We don't even know how we met. I didn't even know that. Yeah. Oh, oh, wow. <laughs> that's probably the reason why I don't remember how we met because that's <laughs> usually the look upon both. Can you go back to that? <laughs> Thank you, Vic. That's the look upon both of our faces pretty why much are, like yeah. 90 percent of the time yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh wow Woo. thank you Vic, for for putting yeah. that one up and and feel free to put up any of these comments that are coming through um i saw that fazano's there astrid's there a lot of supporters a lot of you know uh a lot of Paul Blazik supporters are are going to uh, sort of be filtering in and out of the podcast a, as we go on, but we're finding out about you know Paul Blazik the early years. The early <laughs> years. So so you go from woodblock to snare drum, right? Oh, and, I was and, playing. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Which one? No, I was yeah, but then the drum kit, the whole thing, jazz band, high school, the whole thing, all that stuff, doing it all. Okay. Well, wh yeah. When did you decide that you know what? I I look Spanish, you know. I'm gonna I'm gonna cash in on it a little bit and, and start playing mm. like percussion in these Latin type bands. Or when when did the whole Latin craze sort of like was it just was it a ploy for you to meet girls? Was that what oh, it was? Oh, oh. Sorry about <laughs> there it is, folks. This is so Paul Blazik. He just knocked his camera because he got comfortable. And now he's knocked himself out of line. <laughs> hey, Vic, come on. Where's our producer, Vic? You got to come on the air for a second because you know he's going to come back in. It was, it was going so well. Wreck. This is going to be a total train wreck with you two. <laughs> it's not going to be a train wreck. We're going to we're going to get on to serious topics and serious shit in just a little bit. Paul was asking if he could swear on the show. I told him he could. And yet I didn't tell him to like, please don't kick yourself off uh, the show. So I'm thinking right now, because we have a little bit of time before Paul gets back onto the uh, air, because you know, it's, he's freaking out right now. Why don't we do the commercial that we worked on before, folks? I know commercials don't usually come this earlier in a podcast, but you know what? Today's one of those sort of off the script days. Even though I have a script, it's we're off the script because we got Paul Blazik, uh, world's most mysterious percussionist and drummer coming on uh, in the trenches. But you know what? Vic Chalfant worked on this and uh, Vic and I both worked on this because you know that I'm in Sweden. I'm at my lovely uh, studio here in Sweden. And uh, Vic, you've got uh, Stanley in the background. Hey. 
Stanley looks <laughs> as, as excited as any other podcast that he would normally be. <laughs> He's all right. Stanley's the dog, folks. Like I said, if, you, if you're listening to this on the audio broadcast, uh, make your way on over to Ryan Rocks, the official on the YouTube. Hit that subscribe button. But for your viewing pleasure right this second, check out this little commercial that we made uh, just in the last 28, 48 hours. There you go. Hello folks, Ryan Roxy here, and thanks for watching and supporting all things we are doing over here at the RGA, otherwise known as the Roxy Guitar Army Headquarters. We'd like to invite you to start your own guitar journey with the most comprehensive and easy to learn course that's out there today, the System 12 Guitar Method. I've taken my 40 plus years of experience of playing guitar and combined it with some of the best tech and guitar life hacks to come up with a system that'll get you playing not just the guitar, but entire songs in a very short time. Check out the links provided and make sure to enjoy the lessons. And of course, enjoy the ride. Now, back to the show. Well, folks, that's usually supposed to come somewhere <laughs> in the middle of the podcast. But you know what? We had to unleash it for you on Earth. He's nowhere to be found. He's gone. <laughs> Is he completely gone? Do you think he met? Do you think he broke his phone? I have no I mean, idea. He, he had, had an Android. Well, he had a phone. He had a laptop. He had an iPad. He we were trying to have the link. Maybe he doesn't have the link somewhere, and he's confused of where the link is. Maybe give him a call. He has, oh, yeah. here, he there he is. Okay, he's coming back on, folks. This could be there, there he is. is. <laughs> like he never. I thought that was some. Was that the FBI that that sort of uh, in the witness protection agency that? Uh, well, that was know, nice. That that was real nice. I'll let you guys That's, get back to it. Wow. I was just filling some dead air for a little bit of time. Sorry Got about it. that. And, I had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> was that, you don't have to make a huge excuse to go to the bathroom like that. You don't have to kick the phone and go, whoops, all day. You got you got Paul Blazik here on in the trenches, and of course everything's going uh just right as we thought. Just just as well, it's not as planned, but it's kind of what we thought, right? We've um actually caught up a little bit. There you go. Welcome back, Paul. How are you good. doing? Yeah, here he is, folks. I have, what I have, have, what, what I was have, that whole snafu about? Well, I have narcolepsy. I just took a dirt nap. I woke up. I'm here. I am. <laughs> I, fell, <laughs> doing a podcast. I fell on the floor and I don't even have a drink in front of me. I'm sorry. Wow. That is kind of funny that you said, you know, right before we start uh, broadcasting, uh, Paul goes, I haven't slept all night. And I'm like, oh boy, it was one of those nights like that we hang out. And he's like, I thought you only reserved those nights for us. He's like, no, no, I know how you are. You, you wanted me to be on time. So I couldn't sleep. So, <laughs> and I kind of have a thing where if I'm like, if I've oh. got a, if, oh, <laughs> what is that? Was that the night that we tried to watch like one episode <laughs> of like, like we were all into we're billions, gonna watch, billions. Billions. It was billions, right? I think it was uh, the last season, and it was like one episode. We were all into it. And then you, I think, Paul, uh, made the brilliant suggestion to go to a dispensary. And if, oh. and if you see, it, it was like, and it was really close to uh, to to that man's house who we're going to talk about in just a little bit. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> how many of these pictures do you have? And where did you get That one looks mildly incriminating. I want to uh, know who took it. Yeah. Who did? Take I, I don't know. The Keith probably had a pod set up somewhere, a weirdo. But uh, uh, was that last? Was that, I don't know when that was. A couple years ago. That was a couple years ago. We went to a uh, we went to a dispensary. That's you know, right. A, a medical marijuana, because you have some sort of med medical marijuana license at that point, I think, or maybe it was just legal at that point. And um, yeah, that was us after like not even. Not even smoking a little bit. It was like a tiny, tiny bit. And we watched. We were yeah. so excited. We're going to get into billions. It's, we're going to get into finance. It's going to be great. And then what happened? Like it we were passed out. It was minutes. literally, I remember that because it was literally like 830 at night. And it was like, I, and I remember you two fell asleep. I was like, I can't believe I'm going to Uber home before nine. This is what is real rock and roll. Good to see you, Ryan. We'll try tomorrow <laughs> night. Then I think we did try out tomorrow night, and that went a little too much. Anyway. Yeah, one way or the other. It always goes one way or the other with us. Um, so we're talking about uh, 
all things Paul Blazik, how he sort of graduated from woodblock to uh, <laughs> to snare drum to almost uh, professional but collegiate football player. Then he moves to Hollywood, and then you decide that percussion is sort of your jam, or was it always well, drums? It yeah, was, was all. It, it was always drums. This is what, this is really crazy. Uh, this goes, uh, always drums, always playing. And I knew Mike Fasano real early in the game because I knew Sorum and all those guys. But I met, I ran into or met Carmine Rojas and Randy Castillo. And Randy just was finished with uh, with uh, uh, Ozzy. With yeah. Ozzy. It was him and Zach and Mike Inez and Ozzy. Those guys were off the road. And... Uh, Randy and I was, was shooting shit. We lived close to each other. And I was like, Randy, let's start something weird. Let's start something like two drummers, but also percussion. We could switch off and do something like Gypsy Kings, but more heavier. And then I talked to Carmine Rojas about it. Carmine was also playing with Dave, or not David Bowie, but he was playing with Al Rod Stewart at the time. So the three of us, and then we got a couple other serious hardcore gypsies that would play with us. We just didn't even have real songs. We just had... We had songs, but we didn't have the lyrics. We had jams. Yeah. yeah. And then That's we just cool. kind of evolved, and we called our band Azul then. And uh, okay. that was that was See, that, 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 that clears up a little bit of the mystery. So there you have it, Randy Castillo, the late, the great Randy Castillo. Yeah. Uh, from the Ozzy Osbourne band. Uh, Carmen Rojas, I mean, again, another classic monster. legend, monster drummer. And then you guys are just jamming. And who... Where are you, that, Paul, in that picture? I'm trying to look uh, where you are. Hold on. Go back. Uh, to the right. <laughs> Dude, hey. you're in football form. R Dude, you, Ryan. Look like a, you look like a strong safety. Is that really you on the right? Holy Ryan, shit. Ryan, don't get mouthy. Come on now. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like that's that me. You. All right. Well, it must be the black and white nuance of it. It's not the... Uh, Something. So, so, yeah. There was, a, there was a little bit of... um confusion as you can see in these pictures that vic chalfont is putting up um there's kind of confusion in every picture that i have with you <laughs> but um i i didn't know if the band azul came before or after calle which is calle, your, calle, calle. calle. Hey, no after I'm azul empty, so i can't say i know I can't, after yeah. azul then we had a band called zarak and in zarak it was basically uh me carmine and then we brought Marcus Nand in and Jana Jacoby. And Jana was playing violin also with with uh, uh, with uh, Carmine and Rod Stewart. So we were all a band together. It's called Zarak. And also now, Michael Tovar was with us too then. Wow, man. Crazy. You're, you're, no one drops names like. Oh, I, mean, I, see, I, I don't drop names. I don't. But I, I, these are brothers. These are brothers. It, it, well, and sisters, unless, you know. Yeah, and, you know yeah. that. Yeah, But you know that, right? We all know a lot of people, so it's not dropping we names do. when we're talking to each other. I get it, but I drop so, names whenever I can. Trust me, I do. Yeah, um, I mean, I'm getting sick of it, too. I know. I'm right. I, I ride the coattails of just two people. And, it, and and the other one is, I can't mention, but I ride the coattails of Paul Blazik all the time, folks. Trust me. That is, that is a lie. Yeah, but Continue. Wasn't part of those gigs wasn't part of the reason of those gigs truly to be a gypsy in the sense of that these really exclusive swanky clubs would sort of slide you in as like VIP guests and you get treated great. They pay you great. <laughs> and like what, I mean, didn't some of that, cause you were in, I remember, you know, always seeing Azul advertised mm -hmm. at, at sort of special, special behind the velvet rope. Like you wouldn't even play the club. You play the VIP section of the yeah. club. Yeah, and and we also had our, our flamenco dancers with us too, because no one, nobody was really doing that out here, really out till the Latin flair didn't really come. I mean, it was always been here, but it, we were kind of doing it our own way. There was no rule, you know. It's like we're doing our rock thing. Like Randy set up a drum kit one time with a double bass. You ever see that in a Latin band? What are you kidding me? But that's Randy Castillo, you know. So it's it doesn't true. matter. So we right. had some good times, and we have a we have much. We have uh, a lot of footage, but it's on VHS, so we're going to have to change that up. You know? You're going to definitely have to yeah. uh, transform that. I think Vic has a machine like that. All his old, VHS, <laughs> uh, you know, all, uh, all his old Tracy Lord's videos uh, are, now on, are now on Blu-ray, I guess. Yeah. Are you, are you say that? Oh, Vic is 
laughing. He's like, no, they're not. They've always been on Blu-ray. <laughs> They've yeah. always been on there. Technician. Mr. Technician. So Ooh. speaking of Tracy Lords, how's it going in Los Angeles? I'm sure you you actually hung out a couple times because Tracy is a musician. I'd love to get her on the podcast as well. Um, but I love just the fact that so many people in Los Angeles um do different things as well. Like you said, you yeah. moved there, you know, to with an advertising degree, but then music became your following and then uh or your calling and I, i'm impressed with all the people that our circle has been able to hang with i mean yeah. there's so many interesting stories just amongst the circle and stuff and um, i i have no idea where i'm going with the question just well so ryan you, ryan there's even know. time there's even ryan there's even times that we would hang together literally i don't know where it'd be we'd be somewhere and we look at each other and somewhere we'd be talking to somebody for like an hour and we look at each other and goes, who the fuck is this? <laughs> what, is, what does he do? We don't a even year, know. A year later, they won an Academy Award or something like that. Yeah, exactly. We're like, oh, wow. We actually had some of our best times. And Mike Fasano will uh, has attested to this. We've oh. had it out there. That is a there's a picture, folks. Of that's that's the sack right there on the right, Mike Fasano yeah. in the middle. And uh, there it is. That's one of our therapy sessions. Your very own Paul Blazik. That's us playing a little bit of golf, what we like to do. But the thing is, folks, we had a kinship, I would say, in such good times up at Matt Sorum's oh. sort of oasis when he Ooh. lived in Malibu, right? Tell, explain to the audience what it was like to go there and how did, how did a, like, cause it was never a one night thing. I think it started, it, it started, you, you get a call saying that Matt was going to have something going on, you know, this weekend, but you'd have to prepare yourself for the whole entire weekend. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I was hanging with Matt quite a bit with that. I would say that was right after their, their usual illusion times, but he had the house in Malibu and epic parties, but it would be some of those times like Ryan, do you remember he had his, uh, and I had a photo of you. It's like taken from some old throwaway camera, but uh, that old red drum kit Ludwig he had. It was his birthday. I want to say it was his thirtieth birthday. It's like that four or five hundred. You remember? That? Holy I think crap! He, it was, that was his. Well, okay, no, it would have been his fortieth. No, All right, but yeah. still, still a long time ago. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe, so, maybe it was. His, maybe it was. I don't know. Sweet sixteen. We, you would be out there and there'd be like everyone's playing drums, like hundreds of people. And it was a for jam. I remember that night. And, and 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 for some reason I you know, I I started on the drums. I actually You were on drums with you and Matt and Jason Bonham and Tommy Lee and you. <laughs> what, are you doing? <laughs> what are you I was like, Ryan, what are you and then someone's outside shooting shotguns, you know, it's one of those things. Yeah, I remember that, I, that that house, and and in in order to get there, you had to be completely sober, because yeah. oh. if you weren't completely sober getting there. There was so many hairpin turns, dead man curves, all that kind of yeah. stuff. The minute you got there, you couldn't be sober. It was almost like it, a it was insane. It's funny because you see so many like uh, Hollywood oh, couples. That's not at Matt Sorum's house, folks. No, that was who knows who that was. But I, <laughs> there'd be so many like Hollywood couples that would meet at Matt's house. But you're, you're right about they lived up in Malibu, in Lost Forest Canyon. And I don't know if this is true, but I remember this is that same party where everyone, like you said, you show up, you know, you don't drink, you don't want to, but you're everyone's not sober at that time. But I think Billy yeah. Duffy was sober, and Billy Duffy was the only one that fell off the road with his car. That is so, true. You remember? That was true. Maybe so. Maybe my whole logic of you having to be sober to get there well, is completely wrong. I was already there for two days because I was helping Matt set it up. And this is another story where I had to bring food, and Slash was supposed to bring food, and he showed up with a bucket of Kentucky Fried Chicken. I remember I Matt getting so mad at him Slash for food. Yeah, that's what I mean. Especially that year. That was not. Oh a good my god! Year to rely on Slash for food. Was it a good? I know. I know it. So, but you know what? I was out there for days, but you and I, I gave you a ride back to Hollywood. Yes, you did. You did. Jesus. But we didn't say one word to each other or even look at each other. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think we could. I couldn't talk. No. <laughs> That's the reason I was why it was really sign language. Matt was shooting the shotguns. There it is. Yeah. Matt, uh, the, so Mike Fasano remembers the story. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, those are the good times. Good times. And, then so, and Bone Daddy. And, and you remember Bone Daddy? Of course I, know. I remember Bone yeah. Daddy. But Bone Daddy was a legend. Like, I never knew what Bone Daddy did. He just, because he just, he kind of looked like a um, sort of an alternate. Uh, of ZZ Top. <laughs> yeah, he like 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 if, if ZZ Top was filming a video, they'd say, "Okay, guys, we need to get some stills here. You guys go take a break." <laughs> hey, come on, Bone Daddy, <laughs> just put the strap the guitar on because he had that long yeah. beard. Maybe he even didn't have the beard. He just had the attitude of cool. I, I did think he was. Kind, he might he might have kind of been on Matt's payroll. I don't know. Who knows? Really? Were you maybe on Matt's me? Were you ever on Matt's payroll? I, never I don't think it. so. No. Okay. No. <laughs> are no. you on that payroll now? <laughs> no. <laughs> Those are a few of the things that I wanted to talk about with, <laughs> with, with, with some of the people that you were hanging around in those days. And you did already mention Jason Bonham. Oh, who yeah. We have one of the greatest stories of all time, folks, due to Jason Bonham. Do you remember the, the, the miracle at uh, Wembley? The, oh, the, 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 the Wembley miracle. Unbelievable. Now, Ryan, I thought that would yeah. be. Do you know that was 13 years ago? Okay, so folks, let me set this up. This is the story. Go ahead. About the miracle. The what? What? What does Coxana call it? He, uh, he calls it the miracle of London, or the, the something like that. It, it's crazy. Ben was going to get back for one show. Everyone remembers how there was a huge hype, and of course, everybody in the world wanted a ticket. And you being friends with Jason Bonham, as you were, uh, you said that you could get an extra one for me, right? Well, or, well, or well the grapevine. hold on, hold on, hold on. I said, you were already in Stockholm. Uh, we were yeah. coming from LA. Jason goes, I got you because there was literally, uh, how was there like a million people on a waiting list or something? It was crazy. Yeah. And, and Jason got me plus one. And I lost many friends there because I said, I'll take Keith with me. I got so, you. I got you. <laughs> and, and, and Ryan's like, well, no, I remember. You're like, well, I'm in Stockholm. I go, Ryan. It's a Sunday night, and the show was on a Monday. So yeah. I got the call on a Sunday night saying, if you can get down to London – on the next day, and I had like some miles, I had some frequent flyer miles. I said, you know what? Let me go there. He go, and you were, you know, to be honest with you, you didn't promise me the ticket. You said it was like 90% sure, you know? Keith Not might have. Really. Keith might have said 95. Uh, but, well, but someone, so you, you, you made it seem a bit more uh, sure than it was, but obviously the day of the show. So I, I actually get a ticket. I'm able, and, and I'm thinking, dude, stars align. This is going to be great. I'm going to go down and see Led Zeppelin. I'd never seen Led Zeppelin before. This is going to be my first time going there. Me so too. I fly all the way down there, I get to the hotel, cold as hell. It's it's it's, it's freezing, <laughs> freezing outside. But then I get there, and there's an immediate like, oh, you're here. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. I remember this. You get, you roll in, and I like every day. Keith would go on his tours and walk to all the different places and pull his pants down. I would go to the casino, and I go, "I'll meet you at the pub later on." Every day, right. and then you you were there, and I was like, "Holy shit, Ryan's here!" I love. <laughs> we're so we're, this is how selfish me and Keith were. We just wanted to see you. We didn't know you wanted to go to the concert. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and you know what? In all fairness, I just wanted to see you guys too. And you said, "Look, I we can't promise that we you you'll get a ticket to the show, but we'll take you to all the after show parties and stuff." Like you that. you won this battle. So tell the people what happened because you won this battle. So anyway, they at the last minute. I think they said. I think it was you or it was Keith. Someone said that. Yeah, Eric clapped and called up and asked for tickets. So you know, one of the one of the remaining last remaining tickets, Jason gave to Eric. Yeah. Uh, to, to you Eric, know. Yeah. Eric to clapped. him and his so, wife or whatever. And, and, and I'm immediately like, really? Who? Eric? <laughs> really? Really? Yeah. Ahead of me? <laughs> How dare him? Ah. Oh. No, so I, it was completely understandable, but I said, you know what? Let me go down to the gig. So I go down to Wembley Arena. Just, I, I'll go down there. I'll hang in the bar next to the arena. Yeah. You never know what happens. I see my buddy Jack, right? Uh, my buddy Jack, who's also from Stockholm. 
So he's like, he flew down there too. And I, and, and I see him at the bar and he goes, I go, what are you doing here? He goes, well, I just thought maybe I'd be able to scalp a ticket, but tickets are like 10 grand. Yeah. There's like scalpers out yeah. there selling them for 10 grand. And I'm, I'm like, okay, well, we're screwed. He goes, we have one shot. You know, you remember the drummer of yes, Alan, you know, yeah. Uh, are you talking to me? <laughs> Alan, I'm, 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 I want you to fill the black blank in. Uh, and yes? Yes. Oh, God. Alan. God. Alan. God. Come on. Alan. Alan. What's wrong with Alan? me? I don't know. I'm, I, I, anyway, I because yes played with Chris played there. This is, the, this is that point where somebody in the comments – Goes okay, yes, that's because he asked because he made Alan made records with uh John Lennon. He well, yeah. someone, someone has yeah. to put up the name, well, someone Alan White. Thank you very much. I'm losing we, my brain. We couldn't remember Alan White, Al but, but like we can remember Chris Squire. I know all of our favorite football players have you know some sort of <laughs> name like, like that's it's that simple, right? You know, Greg Smith, Alex Smith, Alan White, okay, Alan so White. They, Alan White, his wife, my buddy, uh, <laughs> my buddy says, let's call Alan because yes, is opening up for the show. And because we had done a charity gig like a couple months up in uh, a couple months earlier in Sweden, lo and behold, Alan's wife answers the phone and she says, oh my God, you guys are in, uh, in the yeah. Party? yeah, it's a great party here. And we're well, we're at the bar next to the venue, and we're just gonna hang out here. She goes, wait right there. So she comes out with two lanyards, yeah, and puts them around our necks, and she says, "You walk straight. Don't look at anybody else. Just walk straight, and you follow me." She actually borrowed Alan white of course the legendary alan white's lanyard and somebody else that was in the band from and yes they borrowed their lanyards we put them on we walk straight through i'm passing like you know noel gallagher liam gallagher i see yeah you know, i see uh foo fighters i see you know everybody, everybody. like is, is marilyn manson's there and, like, and i I'd be but i'm not looking i'm, I'm following directions and i'm just <laughs> I'm walking and I do not stop until we get into the dressing room of yes. And then he takes off, she takes off the lanyard, you know, lanyards and she says, okay, the first eight rows are all for guests. You guys just walk out there and uh, enjoy the rest of your night. And and we just couldn't believe it. So I got to see Led Zeppelin on, on the side night. of the stage, basically. No, 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 from the first eight rows. I yeah. was there like watching it from the first eight rows. And I got to be honest, folks, the first couple songs, Fucking sucked. They blew. <laughs> Come on, the sound was yeah. not good the first couple songs. There was, there was all. I mean, they I'm, they probably spent like about forty eight days getting the sound right. Maybe they spent years getting the sound right at that venue. Yeah. But for some reason, the, the it, there were a lot of squeaks, a lot of feedbacks, this and that. But after they dialed it in, it was friggin' pretty magical. Happened. It was it, it, no, and you know who was the most magic that night? Fucking Jason Bonham. Yeah, he killed it. He, he, he killed it that night there. Was that that night? Not. That? I don't know. I don't know. Let's, let's pretend it was. Okay, yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. But uh, we're up in the stand there, and I'm sitting right where family and friends are all at. So we're just like up in the second balcony and right in the I front there. I was looking up at you. I was looking. We're, at, we were looking down at you, and I go, are you kidding me? Yeah, yeah, it was it was like stage left that you, that, that basically you'd see. Yeah, I, I saw Marilyn Manson and like Johnny Depp and the, the you know the the, yeah. the percussionist of Azul right there. <laughs> was like, oh wait, that's Paul. And, yeah, I, I, and so I saw you guys, but then afterwards we all met at the oh. uh, what 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 hotel was that? Was that the Four Seasons? The, yeah, the Four Seasons. Thomas, you said I get to the, to the after show, and that's where Jason really he was holding court. He, yeah, he, I think he knew he did a good job, right? He knew he, could yeah, yeah, yeah. He was he was hoping that they would go have a longer tour than just one show, but you know, yeah, what are you gonna do? But that was that was pretty anyway. great though. But you had the magic seats. That was a, I was sitting there for going like looking down at you, going, 
this sucks. Jason, you can go. Look, Jason, well, really? I'm, I got mad at him. I go, well, God, what are you doing? I'm sitting in, and this is funny because I remember looking down. I go, God. And then I was right next to Joe Elliott because Joe is actually married to someone I went to college with, how small the world this is. And uh, yeah, she went to Iowa State. And uh, um, he's like, huh. I go, who's, who's Ryan? Ryan? I go, Ryan. Yeah, he plays with Alice Cooper. He goes, I, maybe I can sing in Alice Cooper as a backup singer. I get better seats. I go, Joe, I don't know if you have pole. And then right after that, they did, they did Stairway to Heaven. He goes, hey, I'm going to get a beer. Want to come with me? I go, yeah. It was just bad. Because <laughs> we knew that song was going to be long enough. So that's a good time to get a beer. And that's not the time to actually you because you, because it would be it'd be really in bad form if you actually went to go get a beer and take a pee during the drum solo because the drum <laughs> solo is the guy who got you into the gig so you couldn't yeah. do that and you're a drummer and all that kind of stuff but yeah that's a classic story it did happen folks the miracle at Wembley and um, you left that next morning I did I left the we next well actually we did an in radio interview. interview. And that was one of those things where we just stayed up as late as we could. I remember Joe Elliott coming up to me and and because you had told him the story how I got in, and he yeah. was like, "Yo, what? Man, that's a great story. That's 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 ballsy." And he, yeah. you, you you snuck into a Led Zeppelin concert. That's a, that's fucking ballsy. <laughs> Alan White. <laughs> well, Alan White. I'll yeah. remember the last name White, or you know, ever, even though we did. Well, well, thank you very much, Vic, for putting it up there. But um, yeah, so that 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 did happen, folks, and that was just another story of you know. Yeah. My, my, the thing is, you've always been associated with some high class, high class management names, you know. Oh, well, I don't know. Or M. Jason Bonham, Mike Inez is one of your bros as well. And he's a golfer. He's a golfing partner too. Is you know? He is. He is. He's. Is he a good golfer though? Is he okay or is he? Yeah, like, I mean, yeah, he's good. <laughs> See, <laughs> I, don't know. I mean, who's the best? Is is who's the best out of all of us? Is it Mike Fasano? Mike Fasano. Okay, because yeah, I mean, and then how, I, then I then me the then you. Yeah, I should be the best because I play by far the most when I'm on tour. This last year, I told you, you guys, you know. I got screwed. I, I, you know, only played a couple rounds uh, when we first started the tour in 2020 in Australia and yeah. New Zealand. But then I didn't play all year, and then I I was able to play one round in Sweden. But then I went down to see you a couple weeks ago, and uh, we were we able did. To yeah. Do you remember? Do you remember that what you said It was me, you, uh, Mike Duda, and uh, and and Carlos? There you go. That was like what is it? Seven o'clock in the morning there, and. Um, that is but that yep. is a beautiful Los Angeles shot. Yeah. And look at us all being so, so responsible. Put that well, up. There, folks. I want that to be, that should be, look, wear a mask. I, I don't a, criticize it. Just wear a mask. <laughs> and that's the, that's in better times, actually. That was the time that, before. That's what, can, that was last year. Yeah. That's a, but that's that our therapy. Good. Yes. It is our therapy. That's therapy? our therapy. Yeah. That was, uh, that was, uh, uh, we went golfing. That was a Monday that we were golfing on, and then it didn't stop from there. But anyway, happen on Mondays, you know. Always Monday, always Monday. I won't like Sunday, Mondays. Monday. Mondays. Well, dudes, this is normally where I would have taken a break, but seeing that you dropped your phone and I already played the commercial and all that, <laughs> I know. Of, but <laughs> we are having a good time here, folks, in the trenches with. Paul Blazik, but that's not all because we're talking about all of Paul's, you know, sort of inner circle guys and, and yours and mine as well. And, um, one that we sort of, uh, neglect to, uh, talk about and, uh, who's actually the basis of wasp. He's, uh, he's yeah, yeah. He, he's a guy named uh, Mike Duda. And, um, I, I, do you have any words? Like, like I know Mike's not here to talk, you know, to defend himself, but if you were going to, if you're going to talk shit about Mike, what would you say? You know, like, because he's, maybe he's watching the show or something like that, but what would you say if, if you were going to talk any sort of crap about Mike uh, in his if, game? Okay. If I had to say something, he's good. He's real good. He's sharp. He's a smart, he's a smart dude. He's good at throwing out, nicknames to us all right but he doesn't take on the nickname too well if you give him one which 
<laughs> which Ryan, you have done. I, have I done that? Was, was I the one that came up? Because I, folks, yes, you did. You didn't know me. I do like to come up with nicknames, and I have um, invented a few nicknames over the years. A couple for you, like a, a classic <laughs> for you, which we might want to talk about later. Well, you know, I, I do call you well. I, I called you once a, a Ben Franklin. I, I said I used to call you Ben Franklin for a little. Why? I, I no no reason no reason. Okay, okay. that's I'll, I'll I'll go with it. And but then it, the, the, then the second one should should I say it? Because maybe Which we one? have a logo for it. Do we have a, do we have a Seven Eleven logo? I oh. said Seven <laughs> Eleven arms, but no, but that, that's okay. It's a, it's a totally inside joke, and your arms look fine. Look at those look at those sleeve tattoos. Love that it's in the shot. Please the reason, don't hit again. The Ryan, he this is what Ryan did when he did this gig at Jones. Just him and I had to learn thirty songs, which we argue about all the time. Where he goes, Paul, how do you not know all these cover songs? Because I play originals, Ryan. So I learned thirty five songs in one hour. We played over at Jones, and so after every song, he would go, and on drums, percussion, we have 7-Eleven arms. Or you'd give me a different name after every song. I, I came up with a bunch of different nicknames that night, and unfortunately, I don't remember that night. I, but, I will play on a stage anytime with him. Give me any name. I'm good. All right, cool. Well, again, that's, all the, that's the only crap you're going to talk about, Mike? Mike Duda, folks. For, uh, you know, I mean, would you talk any more? <laughs> there it is. Damn it, Victor! Vic Chalfant is bit. He's quick. Vic, Vic is on it. Uh, Mike yeah. is a good guy. I could uh, go off and we talk smack. We talk some smack all the time. You know. But he doesn't I, like I, any I, little burrito. You don't think? <laughs> I, I, I love it. You do. You you love it really. Yeah. What, what, we, if, 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 now I've heard I've heard this old it's one of those things uh, it's folklore it could be some sort of um, a fable if you will but I, I heard if you if you say his name three times little burrito little burrito don't say it a third time it's only like beetle juice <laughs> he will appear <laughs> but but say it with me let's try it let's try it all right little burrito little burrito. burrito little burrito, little burrito. Little, Little burrito. burrito. Oh! That was the yeah. worst introduction ever. You gotta be kidding me. What are you doing? What's up, ladies? You, What's going on? You fuckers. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, so folks, you, what you just saw was Matt. So my, podcast. Oh my Matt. God. This is, well, it's this magic because me and him are up before nine in the morning. Well, we're up before nine in the morning. Yeah, I know it. Really What's up, brother? What's going on, my man? What's up, Walter? <laughs> man, I was going to say that. Walter's a really good uh, nickname that uh, that has uh, Paul Blazik. Let me let me clear this who up. Came up. Who came that, up with that? First, I'll first of all, let's just introduce Mike okay. to the rest of, of, of the world right now. World, this is Mike Duda, bassist of Wasp, and so much more, as you can tell from his gold record. That's sort of it's he's not he's not bragging. He's not putting it right there, front and center. It's just sort of on the side, so you know it's there, right? That wasn't intentional. You, you, you sneaky no bastard. Like this little thing. <laughs> this, oh, oh, with the 55 oh. West Falls? <laughs> yeah. That looks great. That looks awesome. Thank you, man. I appreciate hey, it. Good morning, guys. How's it going? What's up? I don't this see you guys this early unless we have golf clubs in our hands. Exactly. It's this the is only like, way. This is totally or, or Budweiser. <laughs> well, breakfast of ex-champions. So, I, I, so so, Paul, what, what went on with the camera? Were you reaching for your morning Chardonnay? What, what was up with that choreography, buddy? I'll you tell you what happened. There? I was sitting down here, and if you had a camera going down here, it got mixed up with my yellowtail bottle. So guys can just stop it, shove it, you know. What do you got there, the middle, Irish coffee? I was, I was in the middle of my vodka chino, <laughs> and I'm like, I need a little choreography going on. That's yeah, good. It's because, nice you work, know what? Buddy. My producer says that it, it doesn't fuck up the effect of the total fakeness of our studio. Oh, so, is, good shit. but obviously oh. you. But you know what, Paul? No one's gonna. Oh. No one's gonna even call bullshit on that backdrop of of your. Uh, apartment. That's what you guys look like. That is like full on Hollywood apartment. Hello. Dude. Well, the <laughs> right now, Paul, they want their apartment back. Listen, right now, I right now I'm in my I'm in my uh, I'm in my uh, movie studio. So just let's this is where I do my soundtracks. We don't want to talk. <laughs> Mike, how did yes. Paul get the name Walter? How did that happen? 
and then I'll and then I'll and then I'll I'll tell you how the truth. But go ahead. You know, it kind of came about. What was uh, what was that bar me and you were at down on um by your house, the Irish place? Uh, Tom Bergen's. We were in there, and we were we were a little. <laughs> To say the least, we were, you know, we were a little buzz. <laughs> and you had on those yellow sunglasses that looked like Walter from the Big Lebowski. That's right. I think and it was then, like I think it was eleven o'clock in the morning by then. Right. And then and then I as it ensued, I had to carry you over 17 lawns to get home. <laughs> Remember? I do, but uh, which was awesome. And then no. Walter came or was Walter before that? Walter was just because I, this is where it comes. Keith McCarthy, better known as Coke Santa or the shepherd. The shepherd. Everybody has, everybody, it's shepherd is a good one. Everybody that's has a, that's Mike. This is Mike's like, doing. Yeah, yeah. So, it's, it's, all, it's all my fault. But I'd, I'd say the one, the one, uh, one more Walter is because when I'm sitting there and, I, and I'm like, hey guys, it's, you know, let's just have one more to go before. It's not about drinking one more. It's just, let's have one more before everyone goes. Because a lot of times, if I was doing some shows or whatever it was, I would always show up at a bar if I would go. I don't go now. No one does. But at like quarter to two because I wanted to go have a drink and get out. I was not ever wanted to hang out the whole night unless we were there, like the three of us or something like that. But we would never let, want to talk to anyone else. Right. Yeah. You would call me at like quarter to one. Hey, yeah. want to meet at Jones? <laughs> We, the three of us folks just met at Jones recently because we had a jam and we're not, I, I, yeah, I, I, I don't right. think we're supposed to talk about it. I think again, sort of the witness protection agency, we can't release footage of it. Right. But no. we should. Vic, do you have a clip of us jamming there at Jones? Oh, that that's the closest this is going to come. That, that's yeah. the closest. Yep. That's the night that we jammed. I got that new guitar that same night, yep. that part of Kelly, um, everybody's excited, and of course, we're all we're kind of hip it's a little bit hypocritical because we're not socially distancing at all, but we all have masks on, so that's good. That was good well, that, for that one photo. And then you saw me the whole time I was in LA, I was, but I was even on the golf course. How many masks was I wearing? About three about of them. You, you, you had you were you were OD on masks, that's why the PPE was so short in LA because Ryan Roxy comes from Stockholm and takes them all. But anyway, you were doing here. We're, we do our drill outs. You guys could go to. You guys can go to a bar here if you guys would come over to Stockholm right now. It's completely open. It's well, like they're, they're living in. You know, living in denial. I'm not going to do that because you're just going to pull a fast one. Because what I did with you at the O2 Dome or the Wembley with Led Zeppelin, I'll get there and everything will be closed. Aha! No, <laughs> I'm not going. I'm going to the airport right now. I'm out of here. <laughs> you can. <laughs> now I, I'm going straight to LAX. I'm I'm out. <laughs> what are you doing, Mike Duda? I mean, I'm telling you, man. Thank you so much for waking up. Dude, thanks for having me. You, you know, guys, you guys snuck this in on me. Oh, you sneaky bastards! Oh, did I know? Oh, the thing is, I, oh, I've been watching a lot of Mike Duda sort of uh, stuff. I've been watching. I've been gone down the Mike Duda rabbit hole, and I, in your career with Wasp, and of course your illustrious. Uh, career with uh, ESP guitars. I saw that right. amazing uh, promo that you put. And one of the things you say in that interview, and, and and I wish we had a little clip of it. Vic, do we have a clip of it? No? No, of course we don't. Oh, man. <laughs> but one of the things you did say is like, you love places like Bulgaria. It's crazy. Yeah. Russia, too. And, and, and my question is, Paul, have you ever played Europe? Have you ever toured Europe? Yeah, we did some uh, small small places like usual. Okay, well, what what was it like? Do do you find Bulgaria as crazy as Mike Duda? I was not in Bulgaria. Okay, thanks. <laughs> okay, <laughs> are we good? <laughs> that was not in Bulgaria. That was somewhere in east, somewhere in Eastern Europe, but not quite sure. Yeah, it looks but more look like at East the, LA. Look at the intensity. Look at the intensity. Yeah, I mean, you know what? That, 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 that Slingerland uh, is that that Slingerland Let, snare drum? No, Go back to that shot. It is. No, that's not. That's that. Oh, that's a DW. On. And let me tell you about that. Why I'm kind of nervous right here is because we're doing the Boys and Girls Club right here in Pasadena. And who's sitting here watching me play right here is Jim Keltner. I was freaking uh, out. And we're playing jazz. Boys and girls were watching. Well, that too. Yeah. And the thing is about that. Uh, go back to that shot on the uh, on the, uh, the drum kit, please. Um, did you rent that from Mike Vizzano? <laughs> no, I didn't. Even though he's got like five million snares. 
<laughs> that's good. It's, it's it's kind of like your tribute to Steven Adler right there, don't you think? Yeah. Mike's looking Fasano's looking at that right now, going, That's the only stare I don't have. Right now he's calling me. Ah oh, that's Jason. That's Bonham stuff down in Is that Florida. really Jason Bonham's uh how did you get yeah. that photo? I was down did there. You sleep there? <laughs> you yeah, there that's what that's what that was my room was. I love it. And and look at you, Mike Duda. You you have a couple instruments behind you that aren't yeah. fake. Uh, let's check out the ones that, that uh, aren't fake. <laughs> okay. Look at all these beautiful last balls. Those are nice. Are those all ESPs or are you going against the those, uh, endorsement grade? Most of them are ESPs. Some of them, well, one of them is my old Fender, my 76 that I've had okay. since I was a kid. And I actually had it refinished. I had it redone. The Fender, um, Fender redid it for me, which was totally awesome. The custom shop. They they totally restored it because I, like everyone else in the eighties, I had a, I put a horrible paint job on it and ruined all the value. You know, like everyone would like take the bridge off. My and, guitar green. I painted my guitar pink to join uh, that candy. Was, that was yellow with like all these stupid polka dots. And I, you know, I, you know, I took nice. the original pick guard and ruined it and the machine heads threw them out. Like everyone did. We all did that. in you know, 80s, polka dots, though, that was kind of a Randy Rhodes thing, but yellow polka dots. Now you're it venturing was, into striper territory it was it, it was pretty bad so they were nice enough to, then i had then like somewhere in the 90s bc rich repainted it and it was white and it was all beat up and, and everything and then they were cool enough to restore it so which was awesome i appreciate it it's, this actually leads to to a good question it, re, it, it leads me to a cool question that we have every single week or well, that we've had recently uh, every single week it's, it's called never um uh, it's called I don't even remember the name. <laughs> the one that got away. That's Stanley Gable. Not Stanley the dog, not Vic's dog Stanley, but Stanley Gable. Actually, I give him credit for this. I have a great it, story about that. It, the one that got away means I'm supposed to ask you guys, do you have a piece of gear that you still wish you had, but it was lost, stolen, uh, or you had to sell it for unfortunate circumstances? Uh, what happened? What's the story with it? Mike, do you want to go yep. first? The one that got yeah. away? The last one, um, I had a 70s SVT head when back in like 91, 92. And, you know, like all of us that moved to L.A., I'm super broke. You know, you had to save <laughs> up. You had to save up to be poor. You know, I was saving up to be poor. That's a, is I, that a riddle? Is that a Mike Duda riddle? No, that's me trying to be funny before I have enough caffeine. So bottom, <laughs> bottom line is I had to sell this head for rent. Which, which I always regretted. I pissed and moaned about this for years and years and years. Super fucking pissed. I can't believe I sold this head. And about I'm shocked because uh, you don't come across as someone that would ever piss and moan about anything, right, Paul? Really? Mike would never piss and moan. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> but the cool ending <laughs> to the story is about five years ago, I got a really good friend of mine, Joe Sutton. He, Hello, Joe. He calls me up and he goes, hey, is man. Is he I'm watching your- right now? Is Joe Sutton watching? Probably not. No, not. Nobody's up. Nobody's up. Yes, they are. We are. Look how many people are in the chat right now. They're all praising Mike Duda, and there's a few people that are actually acknowledging that Paul Blazik is here. So you should acknowledge I've been up all night. So just give me that. <laughs> yeah, but you're awesome. Thank so, you. So Joe calls me from downstairs. He goes, "Listen, it was, it was actually my birthday, right?" And he goes, "I got something for you. I'm in your parking garage." No, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not good. And he tracked. I love this guy. He tracked down that head and bought it back for me for my birthday in my forties. So I got, wow. I got it back. Wow. It's, it's, I got it in the closet in the other room. I won't look at it. I won't even plug it in. I'll never get rid of it. Because I was, it. Yeah. But he, I point. actually, I actually got this piece of equipment back, which, which was awesome. You know, I, just, I thought I've, it was one of those things. It's like, it sounded so killer. And I thought that I had lost it forever. And, you know, here I got one of my best friends who tracks it down. And got Maybe we should have Joe me. Sutton on the show. Joe, uh, Vic, can you put on Joe Sutton right now? Is he here? No, he's not here. So <laughs> it's a good story. But moving on, the what one that got ending? away. <laughs> <laughs> the one that got away. Paul, do you have a piece of equipment? Uh, in I would movie? say I would say it would be a Black Beauty that Ra- uh, Randy gave me Castillo. You know, it was just it was one of this. You know, I, and uh, what's a Black I, Beauty? Like a, it's a snare. It's Ludwig snare a snare drum, and uh, I took it up to Amp, Amp Studios or whatever. We're doing a rehearsal up there, and I'm loading the stuff back up. And I they always had the kits up there, but I had that brought that snare, and I forgot it. And I go, shit, I got to go back there and get that. And I go back an hour later, 
it's fucking gone. And I was like, are you kidding me? You know, so it was so long ago. They didn't have they didn't have any cameras up or nothing. It was just so that got but away from me. Stolen. It was stolen. Yep, they were gone. It wasn't there. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I'll, yep. It's probably Mike Fasano's uh, collection. I'm gonna have a chat with him. <laughs> <laughs> with that massive drum room, room you just showed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, that was that was actually uh, Jason Bonham's place. Wow. Yeah. It's gripping. It's gripping stuff here. It's drama, and it's obviously the one that got away. We need to have some sort of animation for that, don't you think, Vic? Yeah, I think so, ne folks. Next week, we can rely on that. But uh, here's what we're gonna do. We are gonna go to another segment. But guess what, Vic? Give me a thumbs up if we have another commercial to go to. Oh, let, let me, me do, do the commercial. Let me do it. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to do it? I have a great. I have a great sponsor for you. Hold on. Yellowtail <laughs> on the floor. <laughs> oh, come on, Vic. 7-Eleven arm. So, folks, you are hanging out in the trenches. This is, again, off the script. <laughs> uh, we're hanging out with friends. We got Mike Duda, basis of, of uh, Wasp, as well as uh, Paul Blazik, the uh, Mr. Calais. from Calais. And, of course, we are going to take a small, like, 15, 16 second break here while we uh, sort of hype our own stuff on In the Trenches. And then we will come back with a little bit of Let the People Speak. Okay, folks? Well, you guys will hang around, right? Hang yeah. on. Don't go, don't go anywhere. Vic, Just run that clip, please. I don't care if you're seven years old or 70 years old. It's never too early or too late to start learning guitar. I'm Ryan Roxy. Come and check out the System 12 Guitar Method. There you go. That's animation, folks. That's Ooh. what you call it. That's the System 12 guitar method. If you want to start your guitar journey, uh, start it with us. Uh, the whole RGA team, which is Roxy Guitar Army, we've got uh, Dave Rattenbury that uh, gives you the System 12 12-week challenge helping you out. You've got Robbie Miller helping you out. You've got myself there. You've got Vic Chalfont. you got Federock over there. And, and everybody that's helping out with the RGA, uh, just go check out ryanroxy.com slash system12. And now we were back to our... In the Trenches podcast with our guest, Mike Duda, and of course, our main attraction, Paul Blazik. <laughs> Folks, welcome to the part of the show where things get a little bit creepy. Things get yeah. a little bit freaky because this is our part where the folks take over. Let the people speak. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Blazik, is that your goat again, bro? <laughs> I thought you got rid of that. So no, I know. I do. It was in the closet. I felt so bad. I haven't fed it for a week. Dude, that's sweet. Yeah, what do you give it? Yellowtail and Skittles? So what? Uh, yes. We, dude, if, I, if we would have known about that goat earlier, a couple of weeks ago, we could have grilled it. Take well, it, to the, oh. <laughs> take it okay. to the Jones. Here's before we start. Let the people speak because we might have to run that okay. animation because it's so expensive. That is, folks, the most insane the best steak that paul and i ever ever had because we turned his backyard into a nfl football <laughs> of, of, of just regular season football wow games. Oh, man. <laughs> is that me sleeping at that point no that's just that's you with 10 masks on gasping for oxygen <laughs> okay if you can go back to that grill right there because there is a name drop in the grill mike just so you know that grill was given to paul blazik by the another bassist of actually another band called alice in chains mike inez look at that that, that well, grill the under the uh the the uh, underneath was the grill is from Coke Santa. <laughs> oh, so the so the grill is from Keith, but the but the actual underneath sort of that's that's thing. Mike's. I'm okay. sure Jerry gave that to Mike, and then Mike gave it to me. That that's how that works. <laughs> so it got regifted. <laughs> Jerry sure. the grill gives it to Mike. Kenny Kenny gave <laughs> Sean Kenny gave it to Jerry. Jerry gave it to Mike, and then Mike gave it to me, and that's how it works. <laughs> and who will you regift that? What do you even call it? It's got to be something like I don't uh, know. I'm probably going to give it to Mike Duda for Christmas <laughs> next year. Grill. <laughs> yeah, but hey, do you like that steak? Didn't you? Okay, so no, anyway, that was awesome. We no, had the most girl. amazing steak that night. But I mean, I, I do have to give uh, your better half, Paul. 
I will go ahead and that's, I will give the credit to Haley West who showed me how to, and I'm learning how to cook a good steak. That comes from the South, Franklin, Tennessee. But the first best steak I've ever had, she cooked me one of those on a George Foreman grill. (laughs) The same one I got sick on, Mike. So I never, uh, that was, you almost killed yourself with a George Foreman grill. That George (laughs) Foreman grill has so much history because I've been hearing about the George Foreman grill for friggin' years. And I never had anything off of it. Remember we were going to test the next one out in Target? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it didn't give you food poisoning? Oh, man. <laughs> Woo. That food po- I got food poisoning from a George Foreman girl. That's a whole other story. Oh, my yeah. God. We need a whole other podcast for that. That was. Yeah. I think it's a whole other genre of podcasts as well. Ooh. Yeah. So no, no. Really in our wheelhouse of uh, in the trenches. But again. This is our big segment of Let the People Speak. Run that animation, Vic. Come on. It's worth it twice, isn't it? (laughs) Paul choking that goat again. Never gets tired. But here's here's the reason why I I, I had to play it twice. Because I do put out questions for uh, every week. I say, let the people speak. Let them ask questions. And um, unfortunately, this week, we only got one question for Paul. It was one person. (laughs) Usually, I'm a little bit strapped for like time. But you did get a very important. So I I thought I'd add a few of my own. Can't answer it. And you know what? No, hold on. Don't say no comment. Mike, if you can think of a question for Paul, let the people speak. Let you go. No. This is from Daniela Nettie. Nadia, what is your big dream for this year? <laughs> um, that's not all of them. The, my, the other questions were from me. Oh, my God. Vic, it's, we have a complete production breakdown. Okay. So the first, first one, what is, my, what is my big dream for this year? Yes. Yes. To actually play a gig. Live. 2021. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The year of the gig. I've yeah. heard about those. I've heard about those. Yeah. I had to build a I had to build a stage in my living room. I'm freaking out. <laughs> Did you I actually was just in there? What didn't you always have that little drum stage there? Can no. you I, I don't I don't want you to show people because I feel that you'll kick the phone off. I'll and, fall uh, down. I'll fall trip, down. You'll trip over the goat. <laughs> <laughs> He might, but if you go back to that question, so gigs in 2021, and then of course the next question was, which was, you know, we'll give Dan- Daniela the credit for for saying it because I added a couple more. Your favorite football team and why? Favorite football team, Minnesota Vikings. I'll tell you why. My bro- real quick here, my brother, my cousin, myself. We were probably my brother's a year younger than me, so we were my cousin's my age, so we were like three and two years old. My mom and my aunt laid out three onesies when we were like that old. There was a sm- Pittsburgh Steelers, a Green Bay Packers, and Minnesota Vikings. I can guess you still why fit the- into that onesie? Can you still fit into it? Oh, I still oh, you absolutely can. I have I have grown up ones. It's a it's a weird thing. It's like you know, it's for you know, it's for for it's basically called You're for furries You're for furries. <laughs> anyway, so I get why the Minnesota Vikings and the Green Bay Packers was there because we're from the Midwest. Where the Pittsburgh Steelers came from, I can just think mom probably went to the variety store and that was the last one there. So anyway, we walked towards you know she didn't those buy three. It. You no, know, I know that. Buy. She, she uh, you know, just like with the snare drum, she, yeah, probably, she stole it. She did a little wooden owner rider action going on. <laughs> I, I like it. Yeah. Who, who you know, who you, your personal friends with. Mike, do you have any good wooden owner rider stories? No. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> so. so we just walked to it. We just walked to it. And that's each one of us walked here. And there's our teams, and there are teams forever. That's it. Mike, do you have an NFL team? Uh, Giants. Giants fan. Uh, okay. Jets, because I feel sorry for them. So all, three, all three of us are out so far. Yeah. We're out. But, but yeah. What a, we have nothing. Know. I mean, I know this is a little current, and people can watch it whenever they want to, but what a friggin' weekend of football. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Right? Did you yep. watch it, Mike? I missed it all. I, I'm sorry <laughs> to say I didn't, I didn't watch any of it. <laughs> I was too busy living the dream. Yeah. What is that dream? Like hanging up guitar hooks? Hang, yeah, hanging up guitar <laughs> hooks and thinking about when I used to be able to get my hair dyed. 
you know, little stuff. <laughs> like framing the gold record just like just enough so that we'll, we'll ask you about it but not make it the center of attention. Is that how? <laughs> Going on your podcast so you can make fun of my scenery in the back. <laughs> <laughs> just little things. things you know. Little things. All yeah. right. All right. That, that get you through All the day. Right. Well, our last question that we had up there, I forgot which ones they were. This is let the people speak before they read it. Oh, there's Ooh. a picture that came up earlier, and it was of a bearded man. And, <laughs> it was like, and, and, and who is this person, and is he related to Santa Claus? And folks, that is, not, that is not Ryan Roxy with a beard, <laughs> some sort of like cuteness filter on his face. That is Paul Blazik right there with the beard. Oh, but yeah, then he got there you go. You've got the name The Shepherd, Coke Santa, or as we know him, Keith McCarthy. Keith McCarthy. Is he related to Santa Claus in any way, shape, or form? Uh, boy. I hope not. <laughs> That'd be one creepy fucking Santa. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. That's We're taking you to the airport there. Is wow. That, is that on the way home from San Diego? No, yeah. this right here is on the way to the airport, but we yeah. still have a case of beer down there. I still it, have like it, 15 beer cans shoved under my seat <laughs> driving you guys home. Thanks. Hey, dude, the story's coming, hey, Mike. Do me a favor. Just don't coming. drinking. Dude, do me a favor. Just don't drink in my truck. Okay, no worries, man. I won't drink in your truck. Story's I'm cleaning coming. it out the next Hold day, on. and it's just. Story's it's coming, funny. Mike. Just, oh, just give, give it a little, uh, a little pace right now because that last picture that you have with just of, a, of us a couple weeks ago when I was in Los Angeles and and my my guys they they drove me back to the airport and I only had uh who's that is that Indiana Jones in the back there what's he doing that's, that that's that's Coach Coach yeah. Carlos is that Coach oh yeah <laughs> look at that man he's well, got his vibe I'm, on he's on yeah. the big four. <laughs> he's on the big four. Uh, oh, he, oh, he's got yeah. a hat trick. Yeah. Hey. Is, he, is, he, is he on a hat trick? Oh yeah, and plus uh, Ryan, you remember the videos? Ooh, <laughs> the big four. That no, the picture of us in the car, as you could tell, I I I was relaxed a little bit. I only think I only have three masks on at that point. Probably, um, yeah. A Chinese curtain and a room divider and, <laughs> and blanket. And you have the That's gator. Cool. Yeah. Ready to come up at any minute, but then plexiglass, it's plexiglass yeah. between us. I wish. I wish, but then they dropped me off at the airport, and I, 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 you know what? Even though it was, um, it was sad to leave you guys. It was the first time that I felt like shit. This is I, I'm, I'm really happy to to, to not be in the states because at that point it was right before it was yeah. right before this craziness was happening right now. And how are you guys handling? Los Angeles right now in particular is everything is it, is it more magnified through media is it matter magnified through all the uh, uh, press that's out there or is 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 Los Angeles really is it like Armageddon in a hellhole what's happening no I, I I just I mean we've been here a long time I think uh, you know, it's locked down that's for sure more than anywhere else but definitely more homeless I see here now than uh, last time was probably in the early 90s. Mike, what do you think? It's worse now. You see, yeah, you think so? Oh, it's you lived up in Hollywood. I, I moved here in October of 88, and I've never seen it this bad at all. I mean... It's so bad that you actually moved out of Hollywood, right? Yeah, I moved to uh, Redondo Beach. I just needed I needed to change, too, though. I mean, I'm not going to bag on where I lived. I mean, I love Los Angeles. I mean, I've Hollywood... I pretty much started my career there and I have awesome memories of it. You know what I mean? But I just, I kind of just needed a change more than anything. So. Well, and, right now with 2021 and that's the, it's the first thing when uh, Mike D asked, when's the next wasp CD coming out and what are the touring plans for 2021? I don't know anything yet to be perfectly honest. I haven't talked to anyone. So, yeah. I mean, I'm sure I'll find out what's, what's going on, but right now I have like no information on, on what we have at the moment. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll ask a member of Walk next time. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had. <laughs> but I mean, like every smart every, ass. It's it's hard right now. I don't think I think a lot of people that do this for a living don't know what's going on. I, right. I honestly, You're, I think a lot of people have my my answer. I mean, we all want to go out and start working again. We want to start playing again. But obviously, the situation right now is it's it's hard. So this it, is what I said last week. We have stuff on paper and, and, and like right. our 
NFL teams, everything always looks good on paper before the season starts. But, so 2021, we have a lot of dates on paper, which could mm-hmm. be great. But let's just hope, you know, like right now, fingers crossed that, that, right. that, that we turn that paper into reality. You just don't know what's around the corner because we've been throwing so many curveballs. I mean, if I was driving on the street and a dolphin jumped in front of my truck, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be shocked. Is that a <laughs> Miami dolphin or is, would that be a, <laughs> I guess that one just went like this. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> You've got to believe now. Are you starting to believe? A little yeah, bit. Know? Yeah. I, I am too. Stretch I, it I, out. And- I'm going for I'm going for the Bills. That's uh, that's that's my team. You're going right for the now. Bills, yeah, Buccaneers. Because- I'm going. I'm with Paul, dude. I'm with Buccaneers. You're bucking it. Wow. Well, you know what? It. I'm bucking it. I can't buck it because you know why? The the the, the fucking uh, receiver that caused the Raiders so much grief. Oh, Brown, dude, Antonio. Dude, Antonio, well, he, he effed with uh, the, the Raiders' whole season that year, well, and we had a good chance at that point. But then again, it's all meant for a reason, this and that. But I have to believe. Maybe your quarter, maybe your quarterback should have had him locked up in his house and not had let him leave like Brady did. Oh, yeah. Brady wanted to adopt him. Dude. Brady. Well, he, he, he brought him in there and said, you're staying with me till the season's over. I don't know if he's still there. He I am, be. though. I am. You leave? I wouldn't leave. Someone's no. like, you want to come over to me and Giselle's place yeah. and just hang and do whatever nah, you want? Yeah, yeah I'd be good. So how much is rent? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure we'll hash it out in Paul's backyard. Yeah. We'll, we're gonna, gonna do we're gonna have a grill out. Football all, central. All family business will be. I wish you guys were gonna be there for the Super Bowl. This is the first year that in so many years, other than the one that I spent in the German hotel room, uh <laughs> story but yeah. uh, uh, the super bowl party we have an annual super bowl party but uh bianca has already told me that uh natasha grace my daughter she's going to be staying over that night and bianca works the next day i can't have a super bowl party at this house this year so where can we go i, I want a super bowl party because you know i'm like who am i well I'm, it's not it's not going to be there but I'll, oh my yeah. god that's coming that story's wow coming. what is that yeah. sandals that, that story's coming that story's oh my coming. god Remove that picture because that's story. <laughs> oh it looks God. like it's called Four Dudes Get Kicked Off a Cruise Ship." What the hell? It's, I, it's so horrible. Yeah. It's awesome. Hey, going <laughs> back there though, I'm just happy that someone's got a job. Whoop whoop to Bianca. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you true. know, I do want this this uh, Super Bowl party, but I wish you guys somehow will have to be there. Like Harry, we'll have to be there virtually at one point. Maybe I'll actually have a live stream during the uh, the Super Bowl, so we can maybe do live commenting. That would be kind of fun. Live right? from Paul's backyard. Yeah. So there you go. There's some questions coming. Oh yeah. Yeah. They, you know, I, they actually ask better interview questions than me on this episode. I, I definitely haven't done my dual diligence of of uh, reporting here, although I do appreciate having Mike do the basis of was and percussionist and drummer of Calais, uh, Paul plays on the, uh, in the trenches podcast, but Hannah Cope asks Paul, Mike, what music have you been listening to lately? Wow. Honestly. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I'll take I that. Listen, I, well, no, <laughs> I have serious, I have serious radio, so I will go ahead and, uh, I'll listen to, uh, the comedy, the comedy channel. Otherwise, hey, you can't go wrong with throwing some rainbow in. Yeah. Some cozy Paul. So, so new bands, new stuff, new stuff. Oh, new stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you know how old I am? I don't know. <laughs> I my, can't get my I can't get my Walkman to work. <laughs> you, can't <laughs> expect, <laughs> you can't expect my Walkman and my transistor God, radio. Me, who asked my that Walkman question? Radio. Mike, what do you what, yeah. what are you listening to lately? Hannah wants to know. Lately, um, I, I got back into the band again, like you know, that whole lost, uh, last waltz era, Robbie um, Robertson, a lot, a lot of Dylan again. I've been listening to a lot of Dylan. Um, I, see, that sounds like an answer you're supposed to say. See, Mike, and, and Grateful you- Dead, I, I <laughs> believe it or not, I, I love the Grateful Dead. I know that sounds like completely wrong, but like a lot of dead, yeah. I've been listening to a lot of Tiffany and uh, Debbie yeah. Gibson, you know, uh, the, the early Debbie Gibson demo, you know, demos and stuff. I miss okay. those two. They were sisters, right? 
Tiffany and Debbie? Yeah, they go to the mall together. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, there's there's uh, a joke in there somewhere, but you know what? <laughs> I do list. I, I go down these rabbit holes a lot of times. A lot of times, and then you go down that YouTube rabbit hole, and like Paul just mentioned, I've been listening to more comedy and political pundits than I have music lately, which is a little bit criminal, but you know, it's it's sort of the sign of the times that we're in. But you can't yeah, never be I mean, friend, sign of the times. Oh yeah, <laughs> I've, been, I've been getting back into humble pie too because of that rhythm section. Jesus, you know, I read like the humble pie. Say. Yeah, you know what, Mike? You're, Why you're am like I being predictable? Beginner. No, you're being just perfect. You're, those yeah. are the things. You, those are the things that all musicians are supposed to say. Like early Peter Frampton was my favorite. I didn't. Know. <laughs> <laughs> but but I did it without the accent. Well, do it with the accent. No, absolutely. <laughs> okay. okay. We are moving on. We are moving on to another segment that Vicket, our producer, has uh, talked about. We need to come up with some sort of animation, folks. You are listening to In the Trenches with Ryan Roxy, but it's not just with Ryan Roxy. It's Mike Duda, bassist of Wasp. There he is, showing off his jewelry and rings. And we also have, oops, can't get my thumb right, right there, Paul Blazik. Um, oh, great. <laughs> yeah, it's so weird. I'll never get used to this. You know, it's like you have to do TV yeah, uh, and stuff like that for a long time to get well, used to where you're pointing to, Bree Walker. So anyway, yeah. <laughs> oh, there you go. Oh, it's just a matter of time before that name came up. But don't worry. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Enough of the Woo. story time with that. Hold Can on. I get a whoop whoop? This is Never Let the Truth get in the way of a good story. It's something that Alice Cooper says all the time. And trust me, folks, Alice Cooper does uh, sort of live by that, never letting the truth get in the way of a good story. This is where we dispel rumors, myths, or controversies surrounding everybody here. So our first uh, never let the truth get in the way of the story, and this would apply to both of you. Uh, did the two of you almost kill Ryan Roxy? How come I feel like Kennedy coming around that grassy knoll right now? <laughs> Let me think. Wait, yeah. Do you mean together? Did, did we did, almost kill him? Did, did you? We plot? Well, let's go did back to that photo, Vic. Can we go back to that photo that I told you to take down so aggressively? Probably over aggressively. Sorry. No. no. The one of us at a pool, the one that we had at a pool, and I, I was like a little too aggressive with him. There you go. Do you guys remember? <laughs> The oh my God! That's almost killed Ryan Roxy. What was it, Paul? You want to take this? Story? Well, I'm just sorry. that that week. That week. Oh, that was, that was the casino gig. That was at the Pachanga, right? I don't know Pachinko, Pachanko, Pachango. I don't know yeah. what everybody. You know, you, go ahead. Well, well, nice shirt. <laughs> Look at that. Was that the money that you gave, uh, Duda? Was that the money that you gave Paul to buy a, a bathing suit to get into that? No. Pool? Because There's here's no. the story, folks. This is the true story. There's Paul one more thing in my life I have to live down. <laughs> <laughs> Paul couldn't get into the pool unless he bought a bathing suit. Wasn't that the story? Well, what happened, I was already in the pool in my underwear. And then the guy <laughs> goes... You know, you can't. I was like, I don't have any swim trunks. I'm not even staying here. These are so, tiny whiteies too. They so were like, I gave them my you know, credit. You know. yeah. <laughs> they were like, they weren't like, good. they weren't flattering, or were they? They might have no, been. No, like, I don't yeah. know. It's the fact they probably had bacon strips in them. I don't know. But I'm <laughs> just saying. <laughs> he drowned them out. I, I, I gave, yeah, I gave him my credit card. He goes back, and then I get my card. Didn't even look at the bill. Then I look at my statement like a month later. He goes eighty five dollars. I was only in the pool for like a half hour. As, anyway, that's the story. It's just and, and then, there, then, then there was one of those wake around pools uh, too. But I think Mike, <laughs> you, almost, you, you almost uh, you almost beat up a little kid because he bashed that into was, you. Right? No, that, that was the, that was the shepherd. The shepherd oh. got in an inner tube and creeped out a whole family. <laughs> yeah, remember he was in we that inner tube and he managed to creep out an entire family. <laughs> that's right. That's he comes back over to us because that slow waiting pool was over on the other side, and we're sitting there at the bar in that middle bar, the three of us. And Keith right. comes over with us, and then this this mother comes over, starts yelling at Keith. Goes, "Why are you picking on my ten year old son?" I go, "What the hell's going on here, Keith?" It's almost he like the bench. He was bruised me with an inner tube. Did yeah. he look at? Did he look at the kid? He's like, "What are you looking at?" Yeah. Well, that was there, and also Benny Hanna. That's a different story. Yeah, that's a whole different episode. So yeah, hold on. 
So the beginning to, that was just the beginning of the evening that turned into the last weekend, which was oh. my birthday, which was somewhere around 51 or 52. But folks, that is Ooh. fact. These guys almost killed me that weekend, or maybe I almost, you know, I, well, I fired myself. We, did, we, we, had a, we had a hell of a couple of days, a few days, and you told me when you were going back and you were at the airport with the shakes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. It turned into a crazy, crazy time because then we drove from that place up to Los Angeles, and then we just continued going and going and going. So I'm glad that we, it definitely, you know. Yeah, that's of, when Mike. That's when. That's why we had the twelve packers, the cooler back yeah. there, and Mike was driving. He's being responsible, guys. Don't be drinking in the car. No problem. We're good. But we already had how many open back there? We're we're passing to Ryan sitting in the front, and of course me and oh Mister Mister Santa in the back, you know. Yeah. It, anyway, I was finding beer cans in that truck until I got rid of it. <laughs> you guys stuffed them in places I didn't even know that truck had. It's like I would open up like something to get like a tire iron or something, and there'd be a beer can in there, and I'm like, really? Yeah. Thanks, guys. It, it was like crossing the border of the Mexico uh, San Diego border. There's like, we're, we're, let's let's pet, take these panels off. Well, oh, it, more more beer bottles. I pulled the ripcord on that after I dropped you guys off. You went to Katana and then continued on, and I caught up uh, with you on the next oh, day. Yeah, the next at, day at Barney's, at Beanery. Barney's, Barney's Beanery. Beanery. That's where I seriously felt something, and I knew something was wrong when when I oh. had to sort of mellow myself out by having a double shot of jameson to stop that the shaking because that, that, that that that, yeah but well, because because someone had this really great sort of response of hair of the dog right and it wasn't yeah. like one yeah. of your responses mike like nazareth hair of the dog <laughs> oh yeah because, because of the that was currently <laughs> that was keith that i tell you you better keep drinking but by the way mike i this i want to tell you thank you for driving that weekend well, yeah. Well, thank <laughs> Thanks for letting me. Yeah. No, we were a, no. We were in no condition. We had a lot of fun. Actually, that was a great weekend. Do you not to go back? Other than the whole again, yeah, almost dying thing. Yeah, it, it was a great weekend. It really was super do fun. You, do you remember the cab driver Paul that picked us up from the bus? Who was? Oh also, my god! He was the mayor, police chief. He was the fire chief. Everything. I, yeah. Yeah. He was like he. We called like a cab to bring us there, and like the same guy picked us up at like four. Same guy. Yeah, I was like, yeah. I thought I was on Catalina Island. I didn't know. Was that the same weekend that, that Paul Blazik actually didn't realize that Cheryl Cooper was married to Alice Cooper? Oh, and he just hilarious. thought she was a very, very attractive lady. And then you actually tried to make a little bit of a, hello, how are you? No, that was no. when we were, that's when I got on the bus with you going down to San Diego. Okay. okay. I remember Paul right? crushing it. I'm, dude, I remember right. you crushing it in the casino. In oh, yeah. You were killing it. You were I like like ten minutes. We did that, and I go. We got to get out of here. Woo, what's your yeah. game, what is your what's, what's your strong game in the casino? Are you a dice? Are you twenty one? No, I, I can't play. Poker. I'll play black. I'll play blackjack. I'll play poker, but not like in a casino. I like on a table, but blackjack. And then and then if you have too many drinks, then roulette because it's easy. <laughs> but otherwise, <laughs> I've learned a long time ago. Stay out of casinos. Is real is when you do roulette. Is that? Do you say roulette? I'm not sure. I thought it was roulette. I don't know. I think it's roulette. I think uh, you're right. Whatever right. it is. Yeah, do it's you, not roulette. How do you spell it? I spell it R O L L. No, I know. Roulette. <laughs> but roulette. I you, know. Do you just go uh, black or white or black or red? I no, I play it all. Or you always bet it on zero zero. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> oh. Oh. There it is. I put it on. I always put it on seven and eleven, and that's it. Wow. Always. I have. You know what? The reason why I've always done good in Vegas and any sort of casino that we play with Alice is because I don't. I never. I, I don't. There you go. Just don't go. Or there. you. Or you leave because I used to play in Vegas every week for years, and that's you don't win if you're there for the night. You win. Get out. But everyone knows that. That's a fact. That is. That's a good fact right there. But I have one more. Uh, never let the truth get in the way of a good story, unless uh, Vic was able to find a picture of the real Paul Blazik. Um, but check it out. It's not going to happen. Yeah. Okay, Paul. Answer me honestly. Never let the truth get in the way of a good story. Am I the only guitarist 
you are friends with because you're friends with a lot of drummers and friends with a lot of bassists. Too many bass players. Mike, <laughs> Mike, no photos. What are you doing? Are you, are you cleaning your house on, on are you cleaning house on bassists? Are you are, so are you friends with any other guitarists or am I the only one? Puts up I don't one? I don't like guitar players, man. <laughs> Liar! That's fiction. It's fiction, folks. Oh, look at me huh? trying, to, trying to sort of. That's me trying to be subtle, but I'm not as subtle as no. Mike with his gold record. It's like, oh, that little thing. That's my album. Where's that at? Where was that? That's at the Hard Rock Cafe up in oh. the city. I don't know where'd you get that photo from, but uh, Vic, this is fiction. I what think. I just said because he is friends with more guitar players. You are friends with Richie Kotzen. I'm friends with Richie. He's a poker buddy of mine, friends with Jerry, poker, golf, poker, my guitar Jerry, players, of course. And you're that's obviously Sammy. friends with Sammy Hagar. Wow, that's Sammy a nice guy. Oh, neat. <laughs> I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say you're friends right there. I think that's, I think that's, <laughs> go back to that shot of you and Nita. I think this yeah. is, how fast can I get out of this picture yeah. before, before As, Paul does something that I don't want? That to looks do. like it's got restraining <laughs> order written all over it. <laughs> <laughs> dude oh, how with... many different kinds of mace are you allergic to <laughs> none mean, are, are you none. Immune to? <laughs> i'm immune to all of them bear spray oh mace. do you always carry an onion with you and do you <laughs> always carry an onion because because that's supposed to help with the pepper dude, spray it's at least what i've heard on cnn this week do you right? know i i feel like i'm at jones right now because we're getting like i like this this is good dude, we're, that, we're, yeah. we're a tough crowd yeah. we're a tough crowd a week yeah. ago, like a, a couple of weeks ago, the three of us folks jammed at the old uh, Jones restaurant, which folks, if you haven't been to when you come to Los Angeles and Los Angeles isn't in complete lockdown, you should go because that is our buddy Shepard, a.k.a. Keith McCarthy. Uh, that's sort of his haunt and it's become our haunt. It's one of the best, coolest places to hang in Los Angeles. And uh, the three of us just jammed uh, a, a couple of weeks ago. There was nobody there. Restaurant was completely closed, but they had some guitar amps and they had some drums and, and, and Duda, you brought your bass and you brought, you know, you brought all your skills. It was fun, right? It was a really fun night. That's the most fun I've had in a while. Just to hang out with good friends, play music. I, that, that was, that was awesome. You know, we just, ran just three of us run. Yeah. No stress. Just, it I'm felt good try to get in touch with Keith. I mean, the only reason why Keith is not on this podcast right now is because I know he's working right now. Right? I know shit. He's already yeah. he's already motorized uh, scooter down to his gig. <laughs> and, you know, he's, <laughs> he's, he's already wore out the carpet. Down. He's already wore the carpet out at the Jones doing laps. Yeah, <laughs> of course. Oh, but I'm, I'm nervous right now. I'm going to try and get some of that footage and post it up on the uh, on the old uh, Instagram because. The thing is now, this is where we sort of wrap it all up a little bit because we have been going a little bit late today. And, you know, because I'm on such a different later time schedule, I get the hook. I get the hook. I get the dinner hook. And I know you guys are just uh, preparing for breakfast and your whole day, which I appreciate you guys coming live from Los Angeles. And, uh, of course, I'm in Sweden right now. But, folks, everybody's been hanging with us the whole entire podcast. Thanks for going on this ride. We'll have to get the three of us together. Maybe next time bring on Keith and we can have a, a little, a foursome, if you will. But uh, <sighs> folks, this is where we're heading out to the highway. And it, Mike Duda is really easy to promote because guess what, folks? Mike Duda has no social media, right? <laughs> <laughs> the best. I love it. And, mine, uh, and again, uh, the perfect answer. You know, I love it. all the answers that you said, yeah, I'm listening to early Humble Pie. I got a gold record and some, you know, we got some guitar hooks back there with classic guitars. And I don't have social media. It's so fucking perfect. I, I just, wish I could. Uh, you know what it is? I think it would just make me uncomfortable. I'm just not that person. I don't, I just never wanted it. I wanted, I never wanted anything to do with it. It was just not my thing. I don't. I don't find myself that interesting. I mean, what am I going to post? You know, like I went to Starbucks today. It just, it's never been my thing. <laughs> you know, my my you coffee wasn't hot today. enough. I mean, I, I'm not I, hot I, enough. I find you very, very interesting. <laughs> Look at that. Dinner's ready. That's the dinner hook, folks. Right from there. <laughs> Bianca. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I get, I get it virtual. I get it. I don't even get the door coming, opening in the studio. It's like, yeah, it's time to go to dinner. But check it out. Mike, you are very interesting. You're very special, and we love you. Thanks, um, brother. 
And they'll hold on. I, I guess that quote works for everybody these days. And now Paul D. Blazik. All right, Paul. Yeah. You have social media. And if people want to check you out and and sort of uh, gravitate to the words of Paul, because I feel that I've unleashed this amazing <laughs> this wow. gem across the good. world. There he is. Please list your social medias for people that are listening to the audio broadcast right now. You want me to? Yeah, you. Isn't it on there? Well, yeah, but, that, but they're listening to it audio. They don't hear it. <laughs> okay. Do you want uh, what is it? <laughs> I don't even care. On uh, it's on my face. My my Facebook's hacked completely. So forget about it. My I, I you can find me on MySpace. Um, <laughs> I forgot my password, but I won't be looking at that. Uh, what else here? Uh, Paul Blazik official Instagram. Yep. Blazik dot Paul Instagram. Kale Music Group. Kale Music Group. Why the two different music? Instagrams? Well, I don't understand the two different Instagrams. Well, I'll tell you why. I'm glad you – I'll field that question for you, Ryan, is because I don't know how to maneuver social media worth a damn, and I don't care either. But so something happened where someone hacked one of them, so I opened another one. That's all I know. The, the Facebook one, that's gone. Every time they send a code for me to either dissolve it or find it, it's going to some dude in Russia. <laughs> so he can handle it. I don't care. All right. All right. There it is. I got the door. That All means right. we're actually out right now, folks. <laughs> Come well, on, we, Bianca. I know. We're not done here. I know, which means, which is always good because it opens the door for a part two. Mike Duda, ah. could, could we lure you into coming on again? Because you are Absolutely. very interesting, and we do like you. We do like you step, stepping on to the social media platforms. Um, Vic, do you want to come on the air just to have us, the four of us, just to have, no? He Vic says no, but uh, Vic Shelf, there he is. There hey. he is, Vic. He's been putting up all these great graphics. He's been putting up all these great pictures. Vic Shalfon, our producer. Below me is Mr. Mike Duda, basis of Wasp. Go check out everything that they're doing, but don't look for Mike Duda himself because he has no social media. But <laughs> social media hooker or who right down there is Paul Blazik because he has not just one but two different Instagram accounts. You choose the one that you want to have. That's, oh, that's his nice. Name, and uh, <laughs> no, that's <laughs> sweet. <laughs> Kale. 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 Brutal. Kale. Kale. Go check out Kale as well. Brutal. Folks, um, next weekend, we or next week on the In the Trenches live stream, we will have the professor of rock. And trust me, because I don't know him as well as I know these guys, I will probably be a lot more prepared with questions and stuff like that. But I like it being free form like this. It's a fun one, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Yes. Vic's sort of just smirking over there. Like <laughs> I didn't even put up some of the better photos. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, I, I had some good ones, but I thought that you might get mad at me if I put them up. Put them up. Well, thank Thanks. you. <laughs> <laughs> that's me. That's me peeing on uh, Matt Storm. Matt Storm. Matt Storm's hey. old, old bed. Yeah. yeah. Just uh, another grill out. Just another yeah. grill out in the backyard. Story. That's a whole nother story about Mike, uh, Matt Sorum's grill uh, bedpost being out in, in Paul Blazik's backyard. But I'm sure we'll be able to cover that in part two. But folks, thank you very much for uh, tuning in to another uh, live stream episode of In the Trenches with Ryan Roxy. And here we go. <laughs> Someone's getting yelled at. That's some severe Ryan, Ryan, on. thank you. Victor, yeah. thank you. Paul Blazik, Mike Duda, Vic Shelfont. My name is Ryan Roxy. Folks, thank you week in and week out for tuning in. Uh, we will see you next week on In the Trenches. Until next time, enjoy the ride. <laughs>